Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's me, the amazing TJ. The sexiest soul in all of existence. Well, uh... It's time for me to answer some questions. I was supposed to do it, like, a while back. Like, a week ago or whatever, but I didn't. Which, you know... Fuck you, basically. <laughs> I'm gonna do it when I'm gonna do it. Just get used to it. I'm an artist. I'm flighty. Oh my god. Uh, um, okay, so now YouTube, uh, I guess, will sort by what is supposedly the top comments based on some algorithm that I don't understand. Um, so now I'm just going to base, base it on that because it looks like it's pretty much just... What it looks like it actually did was just take every comment, put it in a bin, fucking shuffle it around and toss a few out and say, These are the top ones. Because there's no rhyme or reason to these questions. Like, they haven't been, like, rated highly, so I don't know how they're the top questions. I guess that Google somehow knows. It reaches into your soul and knows which questions you're responding to on a visceral level. Which is good. I'm glad they have that technology. They would never use it for evil. Um... So yeah, let's just ask, uh, let's uh, let's uh, give Google its way and just uh, I'll just go with what they've done and uh, answer the questions based on which ones are supposedly the top because the magic box that is Google said so. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna read usernames, damn it! So you you might hear your username read. So if you're considering leaving, don't leave because you might hear your fucking username. Said by me. I'm looking, I'm talking into the fucking microphone. I'm looking at the microphone as I'm talking. Like, yeah, make good eye contact with the microphone. That's the important thing when you're shooting videos. How long have I been doing this again? All right. The Xarian asks, Has anyone ever told you you look like a fat, cleaner Jesse Pinkman during his enslavement, of course? Because I think you do. Well, thank you, top commenter. Best comment. Congratulations. According to Google+, Plus, that is the fucking best question you could have asked. Um, and no, no one has ever told me that until just now. But now, of course, it has happened. So, How to deal with a Christian girlfriend. You gotta make... You gotta make yourself her new Jesus. You gotta make her realize, like, look, bitch. When you come home from work, complaining about your day, and wanting a foot rub or something, it ain't Jesus gonna do that shit, it's me. So, you know, why don't you climb down off your cross, and, and go fuck yourself, basically. Uh, you don't want to say go fuck yourself, but basically you just need to be like, look, um, I'm not into that shit. If you want to have some, you know, belief in Jesus, that's cool. Whatever. It's none of my business. You can believe what you believe, but know that I find that belief ridiculous. And if you bring it up around me, I'm going to mock it because I think it's really, 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 really dumb. And that's not, like, I'm not saying you're dumb because you believe it necessarily, I mean, I guess I'm kind of saying you're dumb because it's a dumb belief that I have no respect for. But I understand that you were brainwashed as a child, and therefore you can't help it. Uh, you probably shouldn't say that either. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's a very delicate issue. But basically, the, the, the thing you need, the essence of what you need to convey is that um, you don't respect her beliefs, but you still respect her. Uh, what does Holly's pussy smell like? Well, thank you. Third top question. It doesn't even have a question mark. It smells like pussy. What do you think it smells like? A xylophone? I don't even know if a xylophone has a scent. I guess kind of musty if it's been in an attic for a while. I don't know. It smells like Holly's pussy smells like Holly's pussy. Just like, um, you know, whatever genitalia you have smell like that. What do you think of Gigi Allen? Gigi Allen is, um, dead. That's about it, you know, right? You don't need much more than that. 
He's not doing anything currently. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I like the song Fuck Authority. But I don't really like much else of his music. But I admire uh, a performer of his extremeness. I just like the... I, I like the idea of someone that just takes it way too far. You know? Someone who, who not only... Like... We got people in our society, like, that flirt with the edge. Then we got some people that kind of put a toe over the edge. Then we got some people that, you know, just say, fuck it, there is no edge. I'm all the way. I'm just fucking pure crazy. And that was Gigi Allen. But his music is pretty fucking lousy. And his lyrics sucked. And his philosophy on life was incoherent drivel. And I didn't really... I just, I mean, I admire, like, that someone is willing to fucking go to that extreme edge and bring back stories of what it's like, but I don't know if he was necessarily, like, super valuable in terms of his insight, really. I mean, I know that he's kind of iconic for some people. I don't want to offend anybody uh, about this. Jeez, I'm being way more diplomatic towards the Gigi Allen fans than I was towards the Christians. I need to, I need to watch that. You know, my bias is creeping in. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. So fuck, fuck Christianity and fuck Gigi Allen. In fact, Gigi Allen is the new Jesus. And uh, I'm going to crucify him on a giant cruciform dong, which will be squirting uh, milk into the air. But no one will know it's milk from a distance. Uh, what do you think about Carl Pilkington? You know, he, he's, he's pretty interesting, I think. I, I really like to hear him talk because he's sort of, like, has this strange little offbeat insight into things where he's almost viewing them with the same, like, simplicity of a child but with a normal adult intellect, which is kind of interesting. You know, he kind of has this naivete to him that you almost wonder what makes him immune to, you know, there, I mean, like, it, it just seems like his mind is, like, suspended in a very childlike state to me. Like, he just, like, it, and it's not, like, in this romanticized way where, like, to him, the world is full of wonder. But it kind of is in that sense. It's But it's it's more like just, like, this persistent curiosity on his part where but he but he he because of the way he views the world uh none of it really meshes in anything coherent it's just this sort of strange tapestry of like random ass bullshit like strange facts really obscure observations just like and it's it's very like interesting to listen to him talk i like him um, I, I, I sound like a bigger fan than I am. Like the way I just talked about it, you would think that I must have like, you know, I've watched everything with him in it or something. I've really just caught like two or three things where like, I've, I've seen a few episodes of like the Ricky Gervais show, which really to me was the Carl Pilking, Pilkington show and rightfully should have been called that. Um, cause he was the most interesting thing about it. Uh, I saw, like, three episodes of that, and then I saw him in an interview, and that's it. And then I might have seen, like, half an episode of Idiot Abroad, and I based... Everything I just said, I based on that. But I don't know why I haven't really see, sought out more of that, but maybe it's just, like, one of those things where you just kind of want to let it happen. You know, you'll just be subjected to it whenever it happens to transpire. Like, uh, you know... You see something really cool, like a badass fucking eagle flying through the air, and you're like, hey, a fucking badass eagle! And other people are like, whatever, and you're like, well, fuck you, I like the badass eagle. It happens to me a lot. Not a lot, but, you know, whenever I see a cool-looking bird, I'm always, like, really revved up and excited about it, and other people are just like, it's just a fucking bird, fucking moron. You know, it's a fucking bird. They're not that mean. I don't know why I'm exaggerating their cruelty towards me. I think it's because that's how I feel, like, inside. That's, like, that, that's why I have such social anxiety sometimes when, when I, I talk to people is, like, uh, 
I always just imagine, like, they think the worst shit. Like, when they look at me, I'm like, they're just fucking, like, oh, I just feel like I'm hideously ugly. And I feel like they can see into, like, the depths of my soul, and they know all my dark fucking secrets and shit. I'm like, oh, my God. <sighs> Plus, like, you know, the banana thing hasn't really helped, because I just wonder who, who sees me out there and like, hey, it's that amazing atheist guy, and then the next thought they have is like, wait, that's that dude that shoved that banana up his ass. I just wonder, you know, if if they look at me and they think like, you know, what if I'm in the grocery store too and I'm like buying bananas? That's a weird moment. Because I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm going to buy these bananas. And then I think like, what if someone recognizes me and then they see the bananas and then they think I'm going to shove these bananas up my ass? You know, like I just do that all the time. How are we? we we've we like barely progressed on questions. I've only answered like five questions. So we need to, we need to, we need to get moving. What do you think of Stephen King? He's the king of the Stevens. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of Stephen King. I've I've read. I thought I read more of his work than I actually had. I was like thinking, like, man, I've read like I feel like I've read about forty or fifty percent of like what Stephen King has written, and then I like look at his, um, you know, bibliography or whatever, and I, I look at that, and I'm like, shit, I've barely scratched the surface. I've read Carrie, I've read It, I've read The Dark Half, I read the Dark Tower trilogy, not the trilogy, why I say trilogy, Doc, Dark Tower series, all, well, I think there's like, I think he's wrote and written additional books, but I read like the core, you know, seven books that made up the, the original intended story arc. And I read a fuckload more. That's just, you know, scratching the surface of what I've read. But even then, like, I've probably read, like, 20 of his books, and that's barely, like, anything. Barely anything. You know, when you look at his entire, uh, oeuvre. There's a word. His entire, uh, collection of stories. I really want to fucking find a word that I feel comfortable with. His body of work. That works for me. If you look at his entire body of work, that's, uh, you know, it's, the moment's gone. Even if there was a moment. How's your smoking problem? I say problem because you said earlier, Tumblr or Twitter, I forgot that you decided to quit for I don't know what number of times. So, yeah, how's that coming along? You know, there is occasional moments where I want to smoke. But then there's the majority of the time where I actually am smoking. So, no, no, no. But uh, I, I do want to quit quit smoking, like, black and milds. And uh, I never really smoke cigarettes. I, I smoke the black and milds, the, the little, basically, giant cigarette masquerading as a cigar. It's like a cheap, shitty cigar. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I have a problem with those sometimes. Like, I'll... It usually doesn't happen if I'm supervised. I'm like a child. I need pretty regular supervision in order to maintain like the basic cohesion of my identity. So, in order to uh, attain that, I have to surround myself with people who are very um, ordered, very structured. People who have who have a, a very particular way that they want things done. And if if I have that then that brings a, a certain level of cohesion to my extremely scattered brain. And um, basically, if I lose that, like if Holly goes away or Scotty goes away, I'm much more likely to smoke because I don't have that structure. And when I lack that structure, I'm left to my own devices. And when I'm left to my own devices... I'm pretty much left to my own vices, which uh, smoking is definitely a big vice of mine. But, um, yeah, you know, it's all good. <sighs> I would say, you know, I, I haven't uh, had a black and mild in like three weeks. But, you know, you never know. Maybe I'll smoke one tonight. What do you think of me, TJ? Uh, I didn't, I fucking said I was going to read names and I didn't. God damn it. That's Hall Soft L. 
What do you think of me, TJ? I don't know. I've never even heard of you before. But you seem nice based on your attention seeking. It's a trait I admire because it's a trait I exhibit. Regarding your vor fetish where you yourself are cooked in an oven and eaten, can you explain the thoughts, logical rationale, and mentality behind this fetish? It seems so bizarre that I can't even begin to understand what thoughts might be going on in a person's head when they become aroused at something like this. Much appreciated. Wow. Really putting me on the spot here. How does anyone explain what they're into? Like, I know some people are crazy about feet. They love feet. They just think that feet are the sexiest fucking things. I look at feet and I see something that is horrible and ugly and is not sexual to me at all. But, um, you know, someone else looks at the foot and they, they're, you know, they're ready to fucking, uh, you know, pump a load between the soles. <laughs> Why? It's so, it's a foot. It's a foot. But they like them, you know, and uh, I could never understand it. Like, you know, I could sit there and I could understand that there's something appealing about it. I can understand that, you know, that in their mentality, like the, within the context of their mind, this foot is sexually appealing, but I'll never understand that. And I just feel like that's how it is with uh, the things I've thought about or fantasized about. Um, you know, it's not something that someone's going to understand. Now, if you're like a submissive or a dominant, or you're someone that understands, like, your switch, or someone in the BDSM mentality, then you could probably understand it as an outgrowth of that, where it's, you know, of course, there's an aspect of um, dehumanization, there's an aspect of, um, you know, like, being repurposed for some sort of utility, you could kind of think it as, like, almost like a furniturization fetish, uh, you know, like the furniture fetish, where, where you know, people use... Um, their partners as uh, chairs or, you know, tables or something like that. Um, so there's this, like, ob objectification. Um, you know, obviously masochism. There's, there's certain, you know, it just appeals, like, and there's just an intensity of it that appeals to something in my nature that, like, like how I admire Gigi Allen for going to the extreme. Like, that's my my psyche going to its extreme and just saying, like, let's imagine the most extreme scenario we possibly can and kind of, like, explore that. Explore that facet to yourself. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. I, I find some enjoyment in it. And um, I found people that are willing to responsibly role play scenarios with me and they enjoy it and um i just think that it's you know like anything else you just uh you have these feelings and you do with them what you can tj do some beautiful sex thrusts for me so i can make a video also what are your thoughts on cats and what do you think of the jesus was invented by the Romans theory that was offered recently. I think it has good evidence and is logical. Ass, sprinkle, nipples, ahoy. And that's from uh, TJ Fox Things, um, which is a... I don't know. I don't know about that one. TJ Drinks Soda is, uh, is okay. TJ Fox Things, maybe that's not okay. But anyway, I'll do it for you anyway. Because I support the arts. <clears throat> you could do something with that. You can... I've seen your channel, so you could, like, put, like, a, um... Like a honeydew melon there. And draw, like, a sad face on it. Or a happy face. It doesn't matter. Either one is good. Um, it depends on how you want it to look, I guess. It'd probably be more deprecating if it was sad. Uh, TJ, what do you think of this? And then they've got some article about how paleo scientists say they've proved God exists. Well, I think that that was six days ago. I think I would have heard something else about it if there was anything to it. So I'm not... I'd have to like 
change like this URL is like fucked and I'd have to like make a bunch of amendments to it to make it work and I don't want to if evolution can explain morality or altruistic acts compassion empathy etc where do those who clearly lack empathy such as diagnose those diagnosed with psychopathic personality disorder fit into this thanks in advance well I mean uh, different people have different personality traits and uh, you know if you know empathy is part of normal human development now first of all you have to understand and I'm saying this as a layman who's just done some basic reading in the subject I'm not to be considered an expert um, you have to basically understand that when you are um, like a lot of kids are basically just sociopathic by their nature like they don't have well-developed empathy that's why kids can be so cruel is because they're really not aware of how cruel they're being um, empathy is something that kind of develops over time and I think there's a lot of things that can stunt its development um, including some people just being born with a very limited capacity for it I don't know if it's necessarily a disorder um, because you know there, there's people that are born a lot of different ways I mean not everyone is born with uh, you know not everyone is born fucking 6 8 not everyone is born 5 4 there's all these variances in human beings I mean some people have big noses some people have small noses some people have fucking fucked up crooked noses um, there's all sorts of just like you know it's just a random genetic shuffle to some extent so obviously there's uh, just some sort of like no empathy card in the fucking deck that you know you know genetics occasionally plays the card um, so I think that's some so psychopaths or sociopaths but um, I think a lot of it also I think probably the majority is really like upbringing um, if you're not coming up in an environment that's nurturing and in loving you're probably going to be uh, pretty uh, lacking in empathy uh, if you grow up in an environment that's downright violent and hostile, then you're probably going to basically be uh, a sociopath, incapable of uh, remorse, you know. And that's really a scary type of person because, you know, you always feel like if you're in a bad situation, if the other person is reasonable, then you can, you know, talk them out of it maybe you can be like look you know you don't want to do this blah 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 and you know if that person has some degree of empathy then you know they're, they're probably gonna at least consider that uh, but if someone totally lacks empathy you can your, your plea is just falling on completely deaf ears where you know you can make whatever plea you want you can you know show them as much emotional distress as you want and they're still just gonna kill you um, and that's the kind of person you really don't want to encounter obviously but we allow society to create people like that when we um, really allow children to come up in these very hostile environments you know with uh, violent and abusive parents or guardians I mean you know to some extent this would be very hard to stop but I don't think we do even the things we could be doing to stop it if ever oh sorry I read that one you'll set us on fire eh? we're all flaming faggots now <laughs> Wow. Google Plus, yet another great top comment. Thank you for your amazing new algorithm that apparently uh, rewards people for extreme stupidity. Would you do an interview on the Thinking Atheist radio podcast if Seth Andrews asked you? I've never heard of that show. I've never um, listened to that podcast. I think I may follow that person on Twitter, but I haven't really seen anything where they d 
distinguish themselves from the crowd. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd probably be willing to entertain doing an interview, but I'm not really much of an interview guy for the most part. I don't like interviews. Uh, I will do them occasionally. Usually I'll do them with small publications and people who just want to do little podcasts or something. Um, I'm pretty amenable to that. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. He hasn't asked me, but if he did, I'd, I'd consider it for sure. Um, what's your opinion on the movie Schindler's List, and what's your opinion on Galen thinking it's a bad movie? I agree with Galen that it's a bad movie. I felt like it was extremely overrated when I watched it, and that's a word I hate, overrated, because it basically says, like, I know most people like this, but they're wrong, and here's why. And I guess that's what I'm really saying. Um, I think Stanley Kubrick probably offered a pretty uh, cogent criticism of Schindler's List when he said that the Holocaust was about six million Jews who died and this movie was about, um, you know, a uh, hundred who lived or however many he saved. Um, I wish I knew the number now that I... I would have... If, if I could build a time machine, I would go back and tell myself to know that number before I started quoting it, but now it's too late, and I can't take it back. But anyway, you get the point. Um, I think that it's a strange movie to be the iconic movie about the Holocaust, because it really doesn't show the true horrors of the Holocaust at all. Like, first of all, the most relatable character that you, that they, the audience likes is Ralph Fiennes, or Fiennes, or however his last name is pronounced, as the horrible Nazi. You know, this guy who's like a ruthless killer, and he's basically played up for, as like, almost uh, like this likable boyish character to an extent, where you, you're almost meant to like laugh at his antics, which seem, you know... Like, he seemed, like, more mischievous than anything. Uh, even though he was doing horrible things. And I, I never understood that. Um, Schindler himself, Oscar Schindler, uh, the portrayal in the movie was just dull. The movie slogs on. It's just boring, 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 boring. Self-congratulatory shit. Like, oh, look at this bold new vision of the Holocaust by Steven Spielberg. Like, Steven Spielberg, this is like... He, Steven Spielberg has a tendency to bury his head in his ass. And I think that Schindler's List is an example of that. I think Saving Private Ryan is an example of that. I think Munich is an example of that. And I thought Lincoln was an example of that. This guy is just basically shoving his head up his ass and licking his colon and people are congratulating him for it. Like, this is, like, the best art ever. I don't know. To me, it's not challenging. It's just, like, it's basically, like, a, a Hollywood popcorn approach to a serious subject matter. It's like he doesn't treat the Holocaust any more seriously than he treats Jaws, despite, you know, his Jewish heritage. Um, that's how I feel about it. But I'm sure that there's about a thousand people who are going to tell me how fucking horribly wrong I am. Uh, TJ, have you ever considered becoming a vegetarian in your Do Dogs Have Souls video? You brought up how animals are just as capable of emotion and suffering as human beings, and you seem like a compassionate person that would be appalled by factory farming practices. You've also brought up dieting in your past few videos, and vegetarians literally lose weight without trying. I've seen fat vegans, so I don't know if that's necessarily true. But, um, I'm not really, I'm pretty fond of meat in general. It's a kind of a, maybe it's another vice of mine. I'm actually uh, doing a vegetarian thing right now for a few days. Um, but that's unrelated to any sort of ethical choice. Are there any celebrities you feel deserve more recognition than they actually get? And also, have you heard of Tim Minchin? If so, what do you think of him? Thanks for maybe answering my question. I know of Tim Minchin. I think he's funny. Uh, are there any celebrities I feel deserve more recognition? Hmm. 
Man, that's really tough to do on the spot, you know? I'd really have to think about that. I don't have time right now. Um, so where's the video at, Four Eyes? Oh, and what's your opinion of cheese? Do you often eat cheese? Google Plus, what the fuck, man? Can you do nothing right? Can you do nothing right, for fuck's sake? I mean, like, I hated the old YouTube comments, and I thought they were in dire need of change, but now that I see the change that you have wrought, I've decided that I don't want it anymore. Just go back to the old shit. I can't take this. <sighs> okay. I'm keep I'm gonna keep going. If tomorrow was the zombie apocalypse, who would be part of your crew? It, it, can I just choose anyone in the world? Like, Cause then I'd just have I'd just be surrounded by like Marines or something, you know? If that were the case. Um and you, people say, like, well, what happens when you get in a survival situation and you're the weakest one there and they eat you? Well, then, like, that's hot. So, win-win. Um, but if I had to choose, like, just my friends and shit, like, we'd just all die. You know, there's no way we're surviving the fucking zombie apocalypse. We're just dead. <laughs> we're just gonna fucking die. It's gonna be funny. Um... Tits or ass and legs? Personally, I'm an ass and legs guy. You know, I like it all, my friend. Uh, not really a question, but please bring back Long Video Sunday. Actually, now I think it was a question about it. I'm sorry. Actually, now I think about it, I will add a question here. Have you ever considered making an A audio podcast once a fortnight with Scotty or Gay Leanne, perhaps. Although I understand that there may be more money in making long YouTube videos. Um, I, you know, I don't like the long video Sunday format. It's really difficult for me to come up with that much to say for that long period of time. When I do long videos, I prefer it to be something like this, where my fans can ask me questions and therefore give the content some sort of direction. Because um, if I don't have any direction, like I said, I'm just like a meandering fool. I'm like a babe lost in the woods, wandering around with my eyes wide, looking at everything as though it's a magical object. You know, that's me. So I need, I need the focus. I need constant focus. It's like a Tom Cruise acting move. You ever notice, like, all he does in movies is squint? Why did you make a video asking for Patreon money for up to $5,000 the month from the YouTube partnership, the money from ADVS, the money from merch, the money from your four books, the money from your Patreon, and the money people gave not productive aren't enough. I asked because PPL gave money for not productive and I can't see where those go. And don't you think it'd be better if you did some things first and ask more money? I'd like to get an answer. Thanks. One. One, one. Thumb up for that. Um... All right, so obviously that was pretty muddled in terms of, like, the delivery, but I think we all get, like, the general gist of the message. And I would just say, like, the money I make from endeavors like YouTube and, like, book sales is more than enough to support my life and existence. Um, I can comfortably live on the money I make from, from that stuff. What I can't do, however, is reinvest in my YouTube channel. Um, and I need, I basically, I need funds to do that because I want this channel, well, not this channel, but my Amazing Atheist channel to be, you know, I've always tried to stay with the ball on YouTube. Like, when, as soon as, basically, I guess the second YouTube started allowing widescreen shots, I had a fucking camera, I just got a camera that was capable of doing that. The second that everything became, like, super high-res HD, I started fucking doing that. When everything started moving over to DSLRs, I embraced the DSLRs. I went back to camcorders for a while. I fucking regretted it. I went back to the fucking DSLRs. 
you know? And I, for a while, I even had someone else shooting my videos. And I think that basically, I mean, I still have my brother shoot my videos, but I had a, you know, a, a third, a, you know, The Amazing Atheist was a three-person operation for a little while. It's, it's a normally a two-person operation, me and my brother. Um, of course, I'm, you know, everything on the content end, but he handles a lot of the behind-the-scenes shit. And, um, basically, I mean, in the video where I make the push for Patreon, I explain exactly what I want to spend the money on. It's not like I'm trying to do some subterfuge where, you know, I want to spend this money on this and then it doesn't get spent on that. Uh, because the stuff I want is stuff that you're demonstrably going to know that I either bought or didn't buy. Like, if, if I do a Patreon push and I say... I want to get, like, this new camera and this new lighting equipment. I want to do animated videos, and I want to get correspondence on the channel, and I want to increase my web presence, and I want to do all this stuff. And then you guys donate to the Patreon. And then I don't, you know, make with the goods. Then it's going to be obvious that I didn't. I mean, why would I, why would I do something if it was going to ruin my reputation? I mean, when you say, when you talk about not productive, I mean... Everything, every fucking dime that we raised for Not Productive was spent towards the creation of a website for Not Productive. But the website wasn't good enough. So what are we going to do? Come out of pocket and, you know, try to spend another $10,000 getting the website ready? So we basically decided to go with a YouTube model, build up the viewership first, develop some talent, and then get a website. Let's, you know, learn to walk. I mean, let's learn, learn to crawl and walk before we learn to run and soar. So basically that's, that's you know, the deal with that. Um, are you a Freudian or a Jungian? I think that that's kind of over. Would you ever smoke a pipe? I think it might suit you. You mean like a fucking Sherlock Holmes style pipe where I, like, take a big drag? I, I take it low. He doesn't take the big drag. He takes a little puff like... <laughs> And then I, I look at my brother and I say, like, indubitably, old chum. That'd be pretty cool. I could feel that. Uh, do you know anything about Mannix the Pirate's death? You know, it's very strange, that, that ordeal, that uh, event. Because I was... I went into my bedroom and Holly was asleep. But on the TV was The Crow. Starring Brandon Lee, son of Bruce Lee. And I, th I thought, you know, and I thought to myself, like, you know, every time I see that movie, I always think, like, you know, he died making that movie. Because they had, a prop, they, well, they had a, a prop gun that had live ammo in it, and he ended up getting shot on the set and dying. Because there was a bullet in the chamber, basically. Uh, they didn't check the chamber. They only checked, you know, the, uh, the cartridge or the thing or whatever. So he died. And his name was Brandon. And then, right after that, I turned on Deep Space Nine on Netflix. It was like season six, and the first thing they had was a thing that came up and said, in memory of Brandon Tartikoff, or, or something like that. Some very, you know, Russian-sounding last name. And he was the, you know, he was a guy that helped develop Deep Space Nine, and he did, like, a lot of other TV. Uh, he was, you know, the executive producer on a lot of TV shows. Helped develop a lot of shows. And um, I think that's and I, th I thought to myself at that moment that's weird because I just saw Brandon Lee and he was a Brandon who was killed tragically on this movie set and then I turn this on and there's another dead Brandon and then at that very next moment I check my phone and I see something that says Brandon is dead you know Brandon Mannix the pirate is dead who's his name was Brandon so it was this very quick sequence of three dead Brandons. Which is a very strange event, you know? The universe will deal you a strange hand sometimes that leaves you kind of scratching your head like, I guess that was just a coincidence. Um, but, you know, basically, I, I was pretty skeptical at first because he talked about faking his death. He pretty much has faked his death before. Um, but this time it looks like, yeah, it's, it's he's dead. So... 
Um, I'm not, I was not really close to him. A lot of people seem to be writing me and saying like, "Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. I know you were good friends. We were not good friends." And I only say I don't say that because I'm I, I wish I would have been good friends with him. He seemed you know like an interesting guy. But the fact is that we weren't, and I really don't need that level of comfort. Um, you know, he was a friendly acquaintance. We got to know each other over a weekend at uh, my friend Galen's house, um, where he had visited for a while, and we talked. And we think we did a blog TV broadcast together, and we had some fun. Um, and he seemed like a cool guy. And, uh, you know, we talked occasionally online back and forth. But for the most part, I, I really didn't know him that well, to be honest with you. So I, I really don't need people coming to me and being like, we're so sorry about Brandon, because it, it's really inappropriate. I, I wasn't really that close to him. Um... Do you think that marriage, gay or straight, should remain a legal contract? That way, the way that the system is set up now, it gives married people an unfair economic advantage. Well, I benefit from the unfair economic advantage, so I'm kind of like in favor of it. Just because, you know, inequality is cool if it's on my end, I guess. Which is a shitty way to look at the world, but, you know, take it from me. How much from 1 to uh, 10,000 do you hate the new comment system? Um, I don't want to go all the way to 10,000, but I'll say like 7,568. And I, I've, I've been going for 41 minutes now, so I think that I will answer everything that's still on the screen and then stop. Uh, what do you think of Ray Kurzweil's predictions about the future, specifically his prediction that humans will have achieved immortality within the next 40 or 50 years? I think that you have to take the predictions of most of the hyper-optimistic futurists with a grain of salt. Um, Kurzweil has made predictions in the past that haven't come true. Um, he's also made predictions that have. So we'll see. I don't think that immortality is that close to being within our grasp. I think that he's a technologist. I don't really hear too many biologists saying that. When I start hearing people in the, in the life sciences or in genetics or something like that talking about how it's right around the corner, I might be a little more receptive, but that's really not his area of expertise. I think it's really just his desire to live forever that motivates him saying things like that because uh, he wants it to be true. But I don't know if it necessarily is. But I don't, I don't know if it necessarily isn't. I mean, it could be. We'll see. I mean, only time will tell. Um, what do you think of Pat Condell? I recall that in your older videos you were vehemently against him when it came to Islam. Have you come around his way of thinking? I was never vehemently against Pat Condell on Islam. I have serious disagreements with that faith. Um, it is an ideology, so disagreements with it are valid. I don't think that it's fair that you can't make a criticism of Islam without being labeled Islamophobic. Um, because I think that there are some things about Islam that are truly disturbing. Uh, and I'm not saying that Islam is this monolithic religion where every Muslim is the same, but I'm saying that there are sects of Islam that are problematic in terms of things like human dignity and uh, equality and, you know, a lot of the things that we hear in the plural, pluralistic, uh, egalitarian West, you know, take for granted. Um, so I do agree with Pat Condell on a lot of stuff about Islam, but I think that in a lot of ways he is, um, he allows himself to fall prey to uh, bigotry, I think, on occasion. You know, I think there's a lot of times when he really doesn't attempt to listen to the other side. I think that he's overzealous in his persecution of Muslims. I think that he lumps them all together. I think that he is, um, you know, pretty intolerant in a lot of ways. But I think that he also offers some valid criticisms. Um, and he's an intelligent man who makes his point eloquently and um, succinctly. 
So I, I think that there's a lot to admire about Pat Condell, but I do have disagreements. And um, I don't think that he thinks of himself as a bigot. I don't think that he uh, has hatred in his heart. I just think that he's allowed himself to become way too wrapped up in uh, one very particular ideological conviction. And he's become uh, overzealous. Mind haze again. I don't know any other way to get through to you other than to be extremely annoying. Did you get my message on building you a site to go along with some of the shit you mentioned in your last TAA upload? I've had, like, several people offer to build me sites. So... We'll see if anyone actually delivers. I've had it promised in the past. And, you know, I think people who arrive on the scene claiming to be expert web developers are oftentimes not, in my experience. Um, would you get in? Would you ever get into porn? I've kind of been into it accidentally anyway. You know, so sometimes I want to kind of, like, do something better. You know, now that I know that the banana video is out there and the fucking... Um, oil videos out there. I kind of just want to do something that's like way better than both of those. You know, something like way more elaborate and cool. Because I didn't know it was going to be watched by a huge audience. If I'd have known that, I'd have done something way kinkier. I wouldn't have just stuck fruit up my butt. I'd have, I'd have done something crazy. Um, so yeah, maybe one day. I've considered like making a video like that and just like having a commentary over it where I just explain how fucking absurd it is that we have all these like strange hang-ups about shit like that i've already kind of made a teach it as life about it there was one a few videos back you could probably find it i don't remember the title um i'm really parched but i'm gonna try to get through this page would you rather drink cat splooge or ass fuck a goat also do you listen to the band tool i want to suck your cock okay google what the fuck Really? This is a top comment. This is a top comment. Um, I'd rather ass fuck a goat, because that's, like, way less disgusting than drinking cat splooge, in my opinion. Because, you know, I can't taste with my dick. Like, my dick doesn't know the difference between a goat and another human being, really. If I just close my eyes, that goat could be anything. But if I close my eyes and drink cat splooge, it's still cat splooge. So that's definitely a no-brainer. Um, I do listen to the band Tool on occasion, and I'm glad that you want to suck my cock. That's very nice of you. TJ, one of the reasons I love you is your beard. Oh, no, because it's gone. So sorry to disappoint, I guess. Why don't you grow it to a wizard beard length? I'm sorry. I just was sick of it. I was sick of it, my friend. I couldn't do it anymore. It's too manly of an image to have to live with. People treat you differently when you have a beard that big. I didn't like it. Um, TJ, I've recently watched Penn and Teller episodes on gun control, and I would like to know if you disagree with a lot of their other videos they made. If you disagree with Penn and Teller on other things, how different are you from... How different are you than the atheist population at large? I truly have no idea what this person's trying to ask me, and I'm just tired of answering questions, and my voice is gone. And I'm so fucking thirsty. Um, I should have brought another water bottle up, because this one had, like, this much in it when I arrived. And I see, like, some... There's, like, a little in there. That wasn't nearly enough to quench my thirst. Um, alright, so this is over.